All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Paulina Gornicki, and I am happy to present my presentation today, You Cannot Pour from an Empty Cup, which investigates the relationship between teacher wellness and student wellness. I recently had the amazing opportunity to do my placement with my provincial health authority, Alberta Health Services, alongside the school health and wellness promotion team. I want to start off by describing the global evidence-based approach of comprehensive school health. So the main objective of this approach is to improve student outcomes by cultivating healthy school communities. It recognizes the important interplay between health and education, where healthy learners are, sorry, where healthy students are better learners and better learners are healthier across the lifespan. So the school health and wellness promotion team really focuses on um, a mandate that's largely driven by improving student health outcomes, and this is done by health promotion facilitators. In Alberta, the main core priorities are focused on active living, healthy eating, and positive mental health. So alongside the many provincial partnerships um, trying to implement comprehensive school health, the team really incorporates the comprehensive school health approach as part of their guiding framework, which can be seen here. In recent years, there's been a growing emphasis on acknowledging teacher wellness as a need within school authorities provincially. So the team's involvement in this area has been limited though, because there's a lack of direction regarding whether or not the team should and could really focus on teacher wellness specifically. So this is where I decided to jump in and really pursue understanding this relationship between teacher wellness and student outcomes to really create a foundation for an appropriate strategic approach for the team. Thus, oops, <laughs> Under the uh, supervision of a health promotion facilitator in Calgary, my research question asked, what is the relationship between teacher wellness and student wellness? My goal was really to explore this topic in a meaningful way um, that acknowledged the team and their goals. So given the complex nature of this question, I organized myself with the appropriate methods. This included conducting a rapid review to understand the current evidence-based. Further, it also included having informal discussions with the health promotion facilitators that are currently engaging in any teacher wellness initiatives across the province. And then finally, as a culminating deliverable, I created a report that was um, highly kind of focused on future strategic recommendations, both rele of relevance to the team and all public health professionals working within the field of school health and wellness promotion. So the World Health Organization recognizes rapid reviews as being efficient. They collect information in an accelerated way, but also maintain a very similar rigor to a comprehensive literature review. So although it is quite an overwhelming image, um, this flowchart here outlines the process of my rapid review. I started off by using the PICOS framework to identify a, an appropriate search criteria, which included a strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. The final articles that were included in my report were determined by conducting a title review, abstract review, and then a full text review. So in total, I shaved off um, all of the articles from a, the initial 3,000 plus articles that I identified to 21 that were informing my report. So since the team's main um, mandate is really focused on the outcomes for students, it was important to outline the findings accordingly. So the studies revealed three main categories of student outcomes which were impacted by teacher wellness. These included social wellness, emotional wellness, and academic performance. Outcomes of social wellness included positive relationships, connection and belonging, and pro-social values. Emotional wellness included self-regulation, decreased stress, resiliency, motivation, and self-efficacy. Academic performance included standardized achievement test scores, mainly focused on the areas of math and literacy, as well as school grades. So now we need to recognize what are the underlying indicators of teacher wellness that stimulated these outcomes in students. I decided to summarize the findings to three main mechanisms of influence. The first is the prevention of the burnout cascade. The burnout cascade is a phenomenon that occurs when the stressors of the teaching profession compound to the extent where teachers begin um, experiencing feelings of depersonalization, emotional exhaustion, and lacking personal accomplishment. So taken collectively, these contributed to a deteriorating classroom environment that really take away from positive learning experiences for students. 
The second mechanism of influence emphasized the importance of school environments which cultivate positive relationships between all school members. This included relationships between teachers and students, but also relationships between teachers themselves. The third mechanism of influence can be defined as the development of teachers' personal skills, specifically supporting their social and emotional wellness. So if we bring it back to the comprehensive school health approach and those three core priority areas, my findings were mainly focused on teacher wellness in terms of positive mental health in comparison with um, active living and healthy eating. So my report was mainly focused on the aspect of positive mental health. I created this visual representation to try to capture the relationship between teacher wellness and student outcomes. So as we see at the top here, teacher wellness takes the positive relationships, personal skills, and prevention of burnout as the three mechanisms as having a foundation of the five social and emotional competencies outlined here. These include relationship skills, self-management, social awareness, self-awareness, and responsible decision-making. Taken collectively, these contribute to a healthy school um, climate. That healthy school climate is really that mediating factor that enables those positive student outcomes to occur. So overall, this visual also wanted to reiterate the fact that there's a lot of indirect relationships occurring and the relationship is really not black and white. Thus, to inform promising action for public health professionals that strive towards teacher wellness and healthy school climates, the focus really needs to be on strengthening social and emotional competencies of teachers, creating pro-social classrooms, and developing professional learning communities. So I want to elaborate on the foundational piece of the puzzle, which really is that social and emotional learning competency. The Collaborative for Academic, Social and Emotional Learning supports and recognizes the benefit of social and emotional learning for students. Their framework shown here on the left um, really acknowledges the fact that these competencies are the core of classrooms, um, schools, and communities as a whole. So my rapid review continuously surfaced aspects of teacher wellness that mirrored aspects of these competencies. So it was really promising to see that overlap with such a widely recognized and evidence-informed framework. Another strong piece of the literature that was acknowledged within a lot of work in this area is the pro-social classroom model, which can be seen here on the right. This, vis or this visual depiction really has a main component of the teacher's social and emotional competence and well-being as being foundational to connect to a healthy school climate and thus the student outcomes that I outlined previously. As I previously mentioned before, it was also essential for those teachers to have positive relationships amongst one another. So the literature also surfaced the concept of professional learning communities. This um, model really aims to create the, um, a positive learning environment that links positive psychology with characteristics of a shared vision, collaboration, distributed leadership, and professional development amongst teachers. So these positive intercollegial relationships really kind of further enhance aspects of teacher wellness and thus a healthy school climate. So just as with the comprehensive school health approach, creating an impetus for teacher wellness needs to be a collaborative team effort. There is a need to support positive mental health for teachers. So public health professionals can work towards evidence-informed practices for positive mental health for teachers that can be provided by both frontline providers but also consultants. This will include effective and appropriate program planning, as well as the continuous progression through taking opportunities for their evaluation. Furthermore, we need to foster workplaces for positive relationships. It is important to recognize that many of the key contributors to teacher burnout are largely determined by organizational practices, leadership, and policies. Thus, there needs to be that collective knowledge of models such as professional learning communities to help enhance this further. Lastly, it is important to strengthen knowledge and knowledge exchange and alignment. This recommendation is crucial in terms of public health as it provides us with the opportunity to create a common language amongst the diverse audience members and can mobilize the unique strengths each can contribute. So overall, my practicum experience was super invaluable. I feel really grateful and I feel like my project was a success in terms of recognizing the important relationship between teacher wellness and student wellness. It also motivated the collaborative creation of healthy school communities for all members and created a foundation for health promotion programming concerning health, school health and wellness. 
Huge shout out and thank you to the School Health and Wellness Promotion Team at Alberta Health Services, especially my awesome practicum supervisor, Christine McKernan, um, Ellen Pierce, and the whole School um, of Public Health here at the University of Victoria for enhancing my academic journey. Hi to my mom and dad also. Shout out to my friends. Love you guys and thanks for the support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paulina. Questions? Hi, Paulina. That was such a great presentation. And my question is, um, well, and your point about how important workplace culture is for teacher health and wellness, because we sometimes think, what is the individual doing outside of maybe their work environment to be healthy? But the significant role of workplace culture in, in health and wellness. And so I'm just wondering in the literature what evidence was provided to show the strategies in place within these workplaces to uh, support teachers. Absolutely. So that model that I outlined, the professional learning communities, I think that was one of the main key components that really fostered those strong relationships between um, teachers in the workplace. So as I kind of mentioned, it links positive psychology and kind of takes on a strength-based approach versus a deficit-based approach. So instead of fixing things, it's seeing how we can take what we have and improve upon it. So it's really that collaboration, that shared vision for what they want to achieve within the school. And the distributed leadership was also a big part of it because um, you can't have all of those positive aspects occurring if it's kind if the top-down approach isn't there, but more of a collaborative um, leadership between everybody on the team that really kind of enhances the process. And also just the general like staff room talk, like, you know, creating opportunities for staff wellness with the whole team, right? So there's tons of resources out there, the wellness sandbox being one of them, that actually kind of have like 10 minute activities that you can, you know, provide at a staff meeting, for example, or hang a poster using kind of um, positive messaging and everything like that in the staff room. So instead of going and kind of ranting in the staff room, teachers are able to kind of take a minute um, and, and, you know, focus themselves on the, on the positives around in their community and stuff like that. Great. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, maybe one more question if there is one. Can I meet, me? meet halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paulina. Um, yeah, you did an incredible amount of work and it pulled together a really interesting model. Um, I remember when I read your first draft, um, I was, because I have a son who's a teacher, right? Um, all I could think about was the structural issues that are going on now in teaching and some of the cutbacks that are happening in some provinces and the debate over class size versus, you know, is bigger or smaller, does it matter, blah, blah, blah. Kids with special needs in classrooms, et cetera. And just wondering, um, because your model really looked at that sort of personal level, um, how you might nest your conceptual model in those larger structural issues? Um, I think I wanted to kind of touch on that point when I acknowledge the fact that it, this support needs to be provided by both the frontline and uh, consultants. So there's a lot of promising actions that are occurring from a more top-down approach. So not only does this initiative need to happen within school environments, it also needs to happen on the level of school authorities and on that provincial level where teams such as superintendents across the province really come together, recognize the importance of this, and can apply kind of that model um, from, the, from the top down, right? So it's that collaborative effort and it, there really needs to be a connection between each of those pieces of the puzzle for this to happen. And that's why I really loved working with the school health and wellness promotion team because those school, uh, the health promotion facilitators that work provincially, they really act as liaisons between kind of that uh, the school authorities themselves and any, um, I guess, kind of like more structural um, organizations that are in place. So it's really having that liaison that will, I think, really enhance that process of recognizing the factors that are really on um, the surface level, but also those kind of structural uh, things occurring that you alluded to. Chris, great, great Thank answer. you very much. Mm -hmm.